from humble beginnings to learning from your failures to becoming a great success. What is your success story? Chip Baker, The Success Chronicles. <laughs> What's your definition of success? Alright, what's up everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And we have my guy, hometown hero, uh, Lance Hoyt, here with us <laughs> uh, for this episode. Uh, so, you know, just kind of how we know each other is, you know, we're from the same hometown. And, uh, you know, when I was talking to you about interviewing with you, I was kind of thinking back to, you know, your family uh, drugstore mm -hmm. there. And, and my grandparents owned a music store, like four or five stores down. And I used to love to go over there and get the milkshake. Yeah. And the, uh, it was an old school kind of drugstore that had, you know, not only the pharmacy, but had everything. It was kind of a little convenience store. Uh -huh. had the, the, burger, the burger stand with the shakes and everything. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. Classic old school <laughs> place in a small town. Yeah. Um, if you could just kind of talk to us about your life story. You know, um. It's been a crazy one, but it's been an amazing one. You know, yeah. and I always like to say, it, first and foremost, it's God's truly blessed me. Yeah. Blessed me with family. He's blessed me with friends. He's blessed me with opportunities. He's taken care of me more occasions than I absolutely deserve. Um, and I'd like to say that my, my faith is a big part of my life. And it's been a huge part of my journey. Um, you know, I, I understand it's not for everyone, and you know, but I'd hope that they would search out God and search out Christ and, and, and look in that direction because I think if you can find Him, you can find peace in whatever you're doing or wherever you're at. That's my belief. Right. That's just how I see things in my life. That, that's a good belief. I believe that too. Yeah. Um, it, not, I don't think enough people do that these days, but you know, you, you still have to do your part. You know, I think everybody says, put, God, put it in God's hands and He'll take care of you, and I believe that absolutely. But he also wants us and me to do my part. And, you know, that's been a big part of my journey. You know, I, like you said, we started out in Hearn, which is a small town. And I think it's gotten even smaller since we left. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was a hard place to, to get out of and grow from. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that I strive to do, and, and I think that came with good family values and, and people behind me, was, you know, trying to do something better with each step of my life. And, mm -hmm. um, the opportunities I got, you know, I, I started playing football, you know, like you said, when we were, you graduated a few years before I did and I just started, um, and it was a passion that I had, you know, I really wanted to play football and I, I worked hard for it. I'd go out and, to the and be good at it. I tried. Yeah. I tried. I don't know if yeah. I ever really was, but uh, yeah, I remember your work ethic. I, you know, it was pretty good. I, I used to go out to the to the football field at night because there was one light that would shine on one goalpost and I'd hang yeah. a tire from that goalpost and I'd be out there by myself nine yeah. o'clock at night. Yeah. And throwing the ball, trying to become a better quarterback, you know, and, I, and it helped me because ultimately by my senior year, I, I got an opportunity to start for the team, which was an amazing experience for me. You know, and I wanted that con to continue into to college, and when I went to my first college, which was Howard Payne University, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was one of the nine quarterbacks. I think we had ten when we started camp, and then they cut it down because it was NAIA, and they didn't have the NCAA restrictions as far as the amount of players. So we had close to 200 plus players. Oh, like wow. I said, nine nine or ten quarterbacks we started camp. One dropped off pretty quick, so there were still nine of us. 
so the opportunities were very low. And you know, I tried for a couple years at Howard Payne, didn't really pan out. Um, and then I transferred to what is now Texas State University. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried again to play ball. It was something I really wanted to do. You know, I got invited to the camp and, and went in. And uh, I actually had a surgery while I was in camp. Uh, a polyamide cyst had to be removed, so I was out for a while. It affected my grades. Um, and ultimately, you know, it was one of those things where it was a bigger school system, it was a bigger football team, and I kind of got lost in the shuffle and lost my focus with football, lost my focus with grades and things like that, let a lot of that slip, and um, ultimately I had to stop football because they wouldn't let me play because my grades had dropped so low, so I had to work on my, my schooling, my grades, and get those back up, but then by the time I got my grades back to where they needed to be, um, the team, like it, it does, it's a business, kind of had moved on. Move it. And so, you know, I, I left football uh, after about three years of trying to play in college. Um, but it was something, you know, I was athletically inclined. I wanted to continue on that path in some scenario. Um, I really wish I'd stayed in baseball. Because I was yeah. pretty decent in high school, but I really wanted to play football. And now seeing the money that a lot of these baseball players, especially <laughs> right. pitchers, and that's what I was, make, oh my goodness. Like if I'd have stayed in baseball, maybe I'd have been all right. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I was, I was going to school. made a lot of money. You see some of the money these guys make, it's insane. Um, so anyway, I, I I didn't go into any other traditional sport. Um, I was in school. Uh, I've been a fan of pro wrestling for years now. I started watching it on TV while I was in high school. and um, You know, every Monday night at my dorm, you know, there'd be a group of us, and we'd all come together and watch some Monday Night Wars, which was WCW back then, World yeah. Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Yeah or uh, WWF as it was known back then, World Wrestling Federation, it's the WWE now. Same company, just different acronym. Um, and so I was, I was uh, working in a nightclub in Austin, I was going to school, um, and everybody knew I'd been a fan of pro wrestling, and the guy who owned the club that I worked in knew a guy that had just started a wrestling school. Um, and he was like, hey, let me introduce you. So he did. Uh, the guy said, you know, come out, try it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, like most people, didn't understand what pro wrestling truly was about. I saw it on TV, the, the spectacle that it was, uh, and I went in for a tryout, and I was in more pain after that tryout than I'd ever been in my life. And I'd been playing football, but I was a quarterback, so I was, you know, red jersey and protected. Uh, don't, hit, don't hit the red jerseys. Don't hit the red jerseys, even though people did sometimes. Um, and, and so I got into pro wrestling. Like, the funny thing was, is I did the tryout, hurt worse than anything I ever experienced. The guy called me and I tried to back out. The guy that owned the school, he's like, hey, he's like, we'd like you to come be a part of the school. And I said, you know, uh, I'm, you know I'm just a poor college kid. I, I can't afford the school. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, how much can you pay? And I said, I threw a small number at him. And he goes, okay, cool. And I put, kind of backed myself into a corner now because I told him yeah, that. You know, I, I, the only reason I couldn't do it, yeah, yeah. was because of the money. And now he's going, no, 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 that money you just said is fine. And I just went, oh. <laughs> And, you know, luckily, I, I, I went through with it and, and pushed through the pain uh -huh. and, and realized, you know, the pain to some degree is temporary. Uh, and then I started. I started back in uh, summer of 2000 for pro wrestling. started training uh, in Austin, Texas at a school called the SWWF, the Southwest Wrestling Federation. Mm -hmm. um, spent about four years on what we call the independent circuit, which are just small shows in and around the country, really. But, you know, at the time, I was just in Texas. Um, and then I signed on with a company. It was a new upstart company. It was called TNA, Total Nonstop Action. Um, and they were out of Tennessee right now, um, Nashville, in fact. Started driving there, like nine and a half hours to Tennessee by myself sometimes. You know, with other guys once in a while, but with, right. by myself. Um, did a few tryout matches with them and got signed with TNA in March of 2004. Um, which was an amazing time for TNA as a company because right. it was a growing company. Um, and from 2004 to 2009, I was with TNA and we basically, it, it grew from a company that ran a weekly Wednesday night pay-per-view to uh, a company that had a two hour time slot on Spike TV. Also, they had three hour pay-per-views once a month. It was a growing company, it was an amazing time. But that journey ended in 2009 um, and then i would made a lot of good relationships with a lot of good people, um, and they helped me get on with the biggest company in the world, which is WWE World Wrestling Entertainment. And I worked with them for really about two years. It wasn't a very long time. I was on their television product for about a year. Um, and then that ended. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's business. Right. Um, 
I wrestled in Japan a few times prior to that, and so I reached out to the people I knew in Japan and said I'd like to come back. They reached out to the biggest company in Japan, which is New Japan Pro Wrestling and JPW, mm -hmm. um, and they decided to bring me in for a one-time tryout. And then they had a, a show in Philadelphia, and I went and we realized that I knew a lot of their people and they already knew me. And so that relationship already existed, and then all of a sudden it went from, hey, you're just going to be here for one day, to, hey, can you stay for two weeks? Yeah. And I went, yeah, absolutely. And then that two weeks has turned into the last six years. And, you know, I've had an amazing experience. It's truly expanded my wrestling career in ways that uh, I never believed it would be. Uh, and it's given me opportunities to grow as both a pro wrestler and as a human being because I think learning a whole new culture, which is the Japanese culture, helps it broaden your mind and open your heart and, and open yourself up to understanding that the world isn't all where we came from. Right. It's not here in Texas. Right. Current Texas is a part of the world, but there's so much more out there. You know, and as you start to grow and expand and get outside of where you start, you start to learn to understand different people and different cultures and, and everything. And, and if you're open to it, you can start being accepting of anyone and everyone. And they can be of you as well because you, they can feel that you want to be a part of their lives and they want yeah. to be a part of yours. It's a very different and cool experience. And, and, and building relationships, too. Yeah. You know, that's what... Uh, I've talked several times on several interviews is you know, so many people, uh, you know, have, have gotten opportunities based off of you know, the relationships that you build. And, you know, that's really what it's all about. You know, like you said, you know, proving that, you know, you, you want to do things the right way and you want to be a good person and right. loving, caring person. And, and people see that, you know, and then, you know, they, you get opportunities from that. You know, not that you're, not that you're doing it to seek opportunities, no. but you're doing it because that's the right thing to do and that's how you should live. But like the big man blesses you absolutely. with those opportunities because you're in line with what you're supposed to do. Nobody does anything absolutely by themselves. Right. That's exactly. the biggest thing I've learned in life yeah. and pro wrestling and, and just in general is that you can do your part, but nobody does everything just by themselves. Yeah. Somebody else always goes, I like you, come here. You got to have him. Yeah. It, it, if you don't get it, it, it just won't happen. You know, there's some people out there who go, no, I did it all by myself. And it's like, I bet if we look into the history of what you think you did by yourself, mm -hmm. you'll find some people that helped open a door for you or, or helped you be a part of the process that you did by yourself, you say. And it, like I said, nobody gets anywhere by themselves in those relationships, like you said, that you build throughout time and with people. And if you do it in a good way, good people want to help other good people. Yes. And if you're a part of that, then they're yeah. going to try to help you. And then it's your your responsibility to pay it forward, to do the same for yeah. others. Yeah. Return of, I'm going to repeat that. Good people help good people. That That's a good one. <laughs> like, man, that's a, a man. If you <laughs> sure, you can get to amen on that one, buddy. Uh, so you talked about your career mm -hmm. uh, as far as wrestling. Mm -hmm. Really neat experiences. What, what are three things that you have accomplished that you're proud of? Man, uh, <laughs> that's a hard one to answer in just a way because, again, because of the blessings I've received, um, I, I'm proud of, I think, the man I've become. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, based on the people that have been in my life. Around you to influence you. Obviously, the, the, what God has done to influence me, and I think just being an open-minded, accepting and loving human being. I, I have my good days and my bad days, and I have a short, short temper, and I get mad, but I never stay mad. Um, and I've, I've done a lot of things where, I'm not putting myself over, but I, I've definitely worked hard to pay it forward. Yeah. Um, you know, a few years ago, a, a friend of ours from Hearn, Dion Dick, she mm -hmm. um, passed away recently. Yeah. But, you know, when her family and everybody found out that she was diagnosed with cancer, you know, me and a large group of people, because I had a ton of people donate their time, efforts, and uh, money, and so many things to her and her family. And I was happy, and I, I hate, I hesitate using the word proud, because I'm not, again, that wasn't about me. That was about her. Right. It was about her family. Yeah. But I'm proud of the people I got involved, that all were just more than willing to, to get involved in that and help her in a time of need, you know, and I think I, I need to do more of that. I need to find more opportunities to be somebody who helps other people, um, you know, and, and, you know, just being proud of being a decent human being, you know. You ask for three things, I think that's the biggest thing, is trying, that, trying that to be a decent human being. Yeah. That encompasses it all, because under that umbrella, 
I mean, you can put everything in life yeah. under that big umbrella. Yeah. And if you're working to make progress in every area right. of your life and being a decent human being yeah. in every area, then, I mean, you're going to get where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, and I guess one other thing I could say I'm proud of is never giving up on my dream. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of ups and a lot, a lot more downs. downs. You know, like I said, those times that ended in those different companies were not my choice. I didn't leave on my choice. I was let go. I was fired in a sense. And especially in pro wrestling in the entertainment industry, there's so few chances and opportunities. Um, and it's so easy to go, well, that's it. And I never wanted to do that. I never accepted that. And I always looked for a new avenue to move forward for. So I'm proud that I never gave up on my dreams and myself. And I always pushed forward and I always found a way and I'm still doing that, even you know, sitting here after some back surgery, mm -hmm. finding a way to keep moving forward so that I can continue my dream. I'm proud of that. And you should be. That's awesome stuff. Yeah. What um, what's your definition of success? My definition of success. Uh, you know, personally, I think my definition definition of success would be, again, not giving up. Because there's so many different levels of success, whether it's, you know, making tons and tons of money or helping millions and millions of people or, you know, inventing something new that's never right. been invented in life. Um, those are all successes, whether it's having a family, you know, right. and being a successful family, being a yeah. whole family, raising kids to whether they're, you know, I don't have any kids, uh, but like my sister has, she's looking at her fourth is coming up soon. Uh -huh. Three girls and finally having a boy. Um, I've never had kids, but... I think success is watching her become the woman she's become and raising mm -hmm. three beautiful daughters yeah. and a son that's to come. Yeah, that, I, and that parenting, it's not easy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I, I wouldn't know that, but I see that through my family and my friends, and you know, I'm proud that I'm, I've become a cool uncle. You yeah. know, um, yeah. you know, and I, I think success is just being able to be a part of other successful things and other successful lives and other successful people. I think that to me is, is a definition of success. What do you think it takes to achieve success? Perseverance. Yes. Again, never giving up. I, you know, equating it to myself and what I've not allowed to stop me. And finding an avenue, mm -hmm. finding a way, whatever you're choosing to be. And, and sometimes dreams change, and sometimes careers change, and sometimes uh, perspectives change. But whatever that dream is, whatever that job is, whatever that perspective is, finding a way to move forward in that area. And I think that's one of the bigger keys. Well, thank you so much for, for interviewing with the Success Chronicles. Um, I think, you know, I'll just tell you from a, from another guy from little old Hearn, yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I think, you know, the things that you've been blessed to experience and, and do because of your perseverance has been amazing. And, and, and I think it's really cool, thank you. you know. and uh, It has been kind of fun. Yeah, you know, I'm thankful that, that God has blessed you to achieve those things, and, you know, with your health and all that stuff because it takes a toll on you. It's, it's a little down right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 but he's looking out for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, believe me, and I think if I can real quick, that to me, when you say he's looking out for me on my health, that story in itself was, I, I've been battling a sciatic. He's never had sciatic. That's I don't know no if you, joke. You know, in, any, any minor back injury? Yeah is major because it's that's where it all starts moving yeah. in your body and that and i've been battling that with in in pro wrestling in training on a daily basis you know and mm -hmm. have its good times and its bad times mm -hmm. but i was able, always able to push through it and the last time i was in japan um i started a tour which a tour is just a, a length of time and amount of shows that we do so i was supposed to be there for two weeks and do 11 different shows um, we did the first six which we had a bigger event on on the sixth show and then we're going to have uh, five more shows after that with the final big show at the end of the tour. After the sixth show, uh, we traveled back from, we were in uh, Sapporo, Japan, and we traveled back to Tokyo, Japan. And in that time, my back just started going more and more bad, worse and worse. Um, and over the next few days, it just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And we had a, a match on the, the seventh show, and I tried to wrestle, and I could barely walk. Um, and then after that, they tried to give me some days off, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And then to the point where I went to a doctor, which they took care of me tremendously. Um, MRIs and everything, found the issue, which was a herniated disc. Um, 
And like I said, over the next few days, we tried pain management, but it just got worse and worse to the point where I had to go back to the hospital, check into the hospital, and the only alternative was surgery. And I'm in a position in here in the U.S. where financially, and I don't have insurance. Yeah. If all this had happened here, I'd have been in a very, very, very bad position. Yeah. But God knocked me down when I needed to be knocked down, where I needed to be, be knocked down. In the place you needed to be knocked down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, where I needed to be knocked down yeah. and had everything taken care of. The company, New Japan Pro Wrestling, took amazing care of me, took care of everything as far as the, the medications, the surgery, the recovery, everything while I was there. And again, if it hadn't happened there, and it happened here, I'd been in a really bad position. But it all happened there, away from home, which really sucked. Mm -hmm. But it happened, went in where it needed to happen. So if God took care of me, like you said, he took care of my health, yeah. when it needed to be done. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, tell that no, story. I no, that's, to a, that's a great story. I think people need to hear that. Because um, I think it also helps on, on perspective. A lot of people, you know, see that, I think if you have a positive perspective about things, yeah. you can find some positive, in, which helps you move past whatever you're dealing with. Absolutely. And I think that, that you know, you can put it in his hand and take care of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for joining us for this episode of the Success Chronicles. We'll see you next time.